Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Sandra and you're watching The Schwoven's Nest. My first Trash to Treasure project is using this old frame that I'm repurposing from a project that I no longer like or need. I'm just going to be taking some white DIY chalk paint and giving it a light dry brushing. I like the look of it. It has some brown, it has some black on it, but I wanted it to be just a little bit lighter in color. I'm going to paint this wood welcome sign white. This is something that I picked up at Hobby Lobby three years ago. I was in Texas on vacation in Grapevine, Texas to be exact. Beautiful little town, just had an awesome time. And I went to Hobby Lobby and picked this up and it's been sitting in my closet ever since. So it's time to get this brought out and put into a beautiful project. I'm using some wood look scrapbook paper to put on the back of the frame. It has a backing that I had removed for painting and I'm just going to use a glue stick to glue this down. So I'm gonna put my glue stick all over the place. I'm going to glue it down and then I'll trim it when I'm finished. Then I'll take another piece of scrapbook paper, match up the lines as best as I can and do the same thing. Using some hot glue, I'm just going to put it on the inside of the frame here and just place the backing right back where it belongs. I'm going to add some of my Sola wood flowers. I love these flowers. If you haven't tried them yet, you have to do it. They have sales all the time, 70% off, 60% off, and they're just absolutely beautiful. I just picked up a whole bunch of colored ones, really muted greens and blues for the fall. So you'll see those in my next video. But what I need to do here is just trim off the stem. Some of these are pretty tough to do. As you can see here, I'm very gently trying to cut it with my craft knife, but most of them you can cut off with scissors. Instead of using a traditional stem for the flower, I decided to cut some pieces of jute rope and just let it naturally curl however it was on the spool. And I thought this would be a really neat idea, make it look more rustic and it would blend in really well with the Sola wood flowers. Once I had all the flowers the way I wanted them, I just used some hot glue on the bottom of the letters and glued them down on the bottom frame edge of the sign. And then I took a little baby chip brush and some of this mushroom paint that I have and dry brushed over the words welcome. I just thought they were a little too stark white and didn't really blend in with the project. And just doing this little bit of dry brushing really made a difference. The last thing I did was take some lamb's ear leaves that I have in my stash and glue them in different areas along the flowers. I love the combination of Sola wood flowers and lamb's ear. I just think that soft green color works perfectly with them. And I couldn't be happier with how this sign turned out. It's a little different. It's something that I've never done before, but I really love it. And I hope you like it too. I love watching my fellow YouTubers create and I get inspiration from them as well. I've seen a bunch of people working with air dry clay, so I wanted to give it a shot. I love the look of it. This is just some clay that I picked up at Dollarama. I didn't want to invest in some expensive clay until I could figure out my technique and how I wanted to do things. This is really nice and soft. It dries fairly quickly, although I did let mine dry overnight. So I've just rolled a little chunk out into a circle. This is the silicone mold I'm going to use. It's from Evil Ted. I have no idea what that's all about, but it's a silicone mold, it's available at Michael's, and it only cost me four bucks. So that was a plus, but I love the design of this one. So what I'm doing is just taking the clay and pushing it into the mold that I like. I'm not gonna remove the excess right now because I'm not sure where the outline is of this. I'm just going to keep pushing until I think I've got it in there fairly well and then I'm just going to peel it up. 
I think this turned out pretty sweet. I'm taking my craft knife and I'm just gonna cut where I want. I just want the large design in the center. I'll take these little extra pieces, just roll them into a ball and then put them back with the clay. A tip for you for this type of clay, I'm not sure what kind it is, but it is an inexpensive clay. It does dry out fairly quickly. So I'll be double wrapping all of the excess clay in some plastic. I've done it just a single wrap and it dries out. So, and then you can't use it. It ends up just kind of falling apart. Anyway, I'm gonna continue working on this until I get it looking the way I want it to. I'm going to put this on an old maple syrup bottle that I've cleaned up and I'm just going to lay the clay right on top and gently curve it so it mimics the edges of the bottle. And then I'm just gonna let it air dry overnight. So here I am the next day and I have broken my clay design. I gave it too much of a push because it didn't actually stay rounded on the bottle. It did dry a little higher on the edges and I tried to give it a little push and of course I broke it. So that's okay. I'm using my Starbond glue and the accelerator and I'm gonna glue these two pieces together. It's gonna look like it was never broken. If you've not seen Starbond glue before, it's like a super glue. It comes in multiple different consistencies and this spray can accelerator makes the glue dry in about three seconds. I just love this. So I do have a link for you down in my description box if you wanna go check it out. It's not that expensive and it works really well for projects like this. I'm also using the Starbond glue to glue my clay piece right onto the glass. And I'm just gonna be putting the glue onto the areas that I know are going to touch the glass. Otherwise it's a waste because it's not going to hold anything. So mostly towards the center. Then I'm going to spray the glass because when you're working with Starbond glue, you put glue on one surface and the spray on the other surface. And once they come into contact, they are stuck. Because the clay didn't dry in the molded shape that I wanted to, it raised up a little bit. I'm gonna use some hot glue just to fill in all of the gaps. And this worked out really well. It made it more of a rustic clay look at the end, but I was okay with that. You guys know me, I love my rustic stuff and I don't need things to be perfect. I just want it to look good. Using my craft knife, I'm just gonna take off any of the excess glue to neaten it up a little bit. I can't do it 100%, but there are some areas where the glue kind of strung out. And if you've worked with hot glue, you know you get strings everywhere. So I just wanted to clean it up a little bit. I'm going to be painting this whole thing, including the clay, with this mushroom colored chalk paint. It's a latex paint that I made into a chalk paint. And this is actually the color that's in the majority of my home. That's how much I love it. It's a cross between kind of a gray or beige, or if you want to call it grayish, which is kind of a new term that I've heard around a little bit. I'm also using a super soft brush because I want to minimize the brush strokes on this. Now that it's completely dry, I'm just going over with a brush that has already got some white paint on it. So it's not a dry brush. I just want to hit some of those top areas, some of the stuff in between. I'm also going to go across the ridges at the bottom, and I'm also going to do the spout at the top. I love how this one turned out. I think it looks amazing. It's not 100% perfect, but I am in love. For my second project with clay, I'm just putting out a little circle of clay here and I'm actually going to try using some of my scrapbooking rubber stamps. I've got three of them that are just little insects. So one's a ladybug, one's a butterfly and one's a dragonfly. I'm going to push my rubber stamps into the clay until I get a really nice indentation and then I'm just going to cut them out into a little circle. 
And yes, I am using a pair of scissors. I just found that this was so much easier than trying to make a circle with my craft knife. So I was just able to use an old pair of scissors and this worked great. So I did learn my lesson with the large piece of clay that didn't dry rounded like I thought it would and I'm going to take these put them on and put a piece of painters tape to hold them in place. Now this isn't too much of a rounded edge but I still wanted them to dry so I wouldn't have to fill in any holes. Since this is only dollar store clay it didn't take a long time for these little pieces to get drier. They're not a hundred percent dry. I let them sit for a couple of hours and they're actually quite firm. So I decided that I was just going to go ahead and glue them with my Starbond glue onto this little terracotta pot. And this turned out great. I don't think I would do that with a large piece because when clay dries it tends to shrink up a little bit. I'm glad I found out that you could work with the smaller pieces when they're not 100% dry and especially when you're not putting them on too much of a curved object. I'm going to continue this for the other two pieces of clay. Now that I've got the clay on, I'm going to use my white chalk paint and I'm not using the really soft brush this time because I don't mind the brush strokes on this material. It's going to help with the distressing later on. I'm just going to give this one really good coat. To distress this little guy, I'm using my bare decorative finish wax in brown. I'm going to use my Dollar Tree stencil brush and I'm going to make sure I get all of the wax inside all the nooks and crannies and around each of the little clay pieces. I want that to bring out all of the details. Then I'm going to put the wax all over the pot. I'm going pretty heavy with it, but then I'm going to take a baby wipe and wipe off the excess and kind of blend it together. I'm going to add some farmhouse charm to this little pot with some Spanish moss and some lavender. The lavender I had to trim down and bend the pieces into an L shape so I would have something to glue onto this surface. It's a really hard surface because it had succulents in it and they were like totally cemented in there. I'm not quite sure what it is. I think it's like resin but it's really rock hard so that's what I'm doing. Just trimming off the little stems, bending the bottom into an L shape and using that to glue it in place. I haven't done it a true trash to treasure in a really long time so I had this little box from a tray of butter tarts and oh my goodness were they ever delicious and I'm just going to take my box cutter and cut this right in half using hot glue I'm going to glue the two sides together but opposite so it has a little bit more structure but you can see that there are some open sides that we're going to have to take care of I'm using some of these wood garden stakes that I get at Dollarama and I'm just going to take off the little angle there with my miter shears. Now you could use large jumbo popsicle sticks, you could use paint stir sticks for this, you can even use just thin popsicle sticks. You want to be able to just use anything you have in your stash and I'm just trying to help you find a way to make a faux wood box for your dining table. It doesn't always have to be 100% solid wood. You can actually make it look like wood too. I'm going to start by just hot gluing pieces to the outside of the box. And this one was easy to do because it has the box for support. The next section isn't going to be that easy, but it works out pretty good anyway. I'm just going to be taking some hot glue, putting it on that center seam and then on the bottom edge of the box. And I'll repeat this process all the way around the box until I get back to the beginning. When I got to the end, I had to make a cut, which was easy to do, and then I just hot glued that into place as well. 
for the start of the second row, I made sure that where there was a short piece, I started gluing a long piece, and that would just help to make it more sturdy. I wanted to do something to camouflage the seams and also to make the box a little bit more interesting. So I'm taking these really skinny bamboo sticks that I got on Amazon a while back. It was actually an oops purchase. I thought they were much bigger than they were, but I've been using them all along and they're about the width of a popsicle stick. So you could definitely just use a regular size popsicle stick for this. I cut smaller pieces too to hide the up and down seams and just hot glued everything together. Since I wanted this to look more like a thick piece of wood, I'm taking more of those bamboo sticks and I'm gluing them on the top flat so it looks like a thicker piece of wood. You can see on the right hand side, I've already done one. To make this look even more like one piece of solid wood, I'm taking some of my spackle and I'm gonna fill in all of the cracks and make sure that everything is nice and smooth. I'm also going to do this on the top edge where the flat piece at the top meets the side and that will ensure that you won't see a seam there at all. I love using this DAP dry deck spackling. It's the one that is pink and then turns white when it's dry. It dries really easily and it doesn't flake or chip. When you sand it, it's a really heavy dust so it doesn't fly anywhere. It just kind of falls down and that just makes it so much easier to work with. I'm going to paint this with one coat of my DIY chalk paint and I didn't need to do two coats because number one, it covered really well with one coat and I'm also going to be distressing it after. I realized a while ago that I haven't done a lot of distressing with black lately and I love the effect of the black on the white. I'm just using a dry brush and pouncing some of the paint off, but I wanna make sure I get some of the corners and some of those edges so it really looks like it's worn away. I'm using a couple of pieces of pool noodle that I just set inside the box. I am not gluing anything down for this arrangement because I want to have the ability to change it out for the seasons. Right now I'm just going to be adding some greenery and some moss like you see me doing here just to kind of camouflage that pool noodle. I've got a huge bucket of greenery bits and pieces and that's what I'm using to add into this arrangement. I'm going to poke the ones down that have a wire on them and if they don't have a wire I'm just going to kind of push them in and wedge them in beside the noodle and fill it up as much as I want. I'm using a bunch of different types. I've got some eucalyptus, I've got some asparagus fern, I've got some other things, different colors, and then at the end I decided I needed to have some color. I added some Sola wood flowers and just pushed them in here and there and I think this turned out absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for watching straight to the end. I do really appreciate your support. If you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. That black arrow will tell you exactly where to click. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. That tells YouTube you like it and they promote me more, which helps my channel grow. Thanks again. Bye for now.